Hey designer, Alex here, welcome to the channel and welcome to the second video from this web design series in which we are going to take the website project from the start to the finish. In this second video we are going to continue where we left off the previous week. We are going to import those paper wireframes into Adobe XD and we are going to create the Adobe XD wireframe inside so that we can share it with our clients to get some additional feedback before we move into design. This video series is actually insert from a new course, Adobe XD Masterclass, and you are going to get a massive discount on that course. A link to the course and a discount and the coupon code is going to be in the description down below. So you can check that out if you want to access the Masterclass, which is over 20 hours long, and it covers a bunch of these website design pages, prototyping, wireframing, so everything is included inside. If you are interested, you can check it out. But for now, let's jump inside this video. Alright, so welcome to the second part of this video series and in this second part we are actually going to jump inside of Adobe XD and we are going to import that paper wireframe that we created in the previous video and in this video we are going to create a wireframe in Adobe XD. So to get started you can simply scan the wireframe that we drew previously in the previous video if you have a scanner. If you don't you can use your phone, any phone might work. You can simply snap a picture of that wireframe and you can bring it back to your computer. Import it via USB cable, you can send it uh, to your computer by uh, Bluetooth or you can send it via email, however you want to do this. You can simply import it into your computer, then drag and drop into Adobe XD. So what I have right here is Adobe XD document and this is just a basic 1920 by 1080 and this is just a regular thing if you're doing uh, web design. And what I'm going to do is unzoom a little bit and simply drag and drop my paper wireframe which I have previously imported inside of XD. So once again, if you have a scanner, you can do it like that. If you don't have a scanner, you can simply, as I said, snap a picture with your phone or whatever you want to do it and then simply bring it inside of Adobe XD. So why we are doing this is, as I explained in a previous video, is it's a lot easier for us if we have this uh, side by side so that we can glance at this wireframe that we previously created, just so that we can see and inspire ourselves or to remind ourselves what we have created previously uh, in order to bring it back to Adobe XD and recreate it there. Now note that this is not the final design, you are doing these paper wireframes just as a sort of reference, just to explore some ideas, see some layout ideas, see some element ideas, perhaps you want to experiment with rounded corners like we have right here, or even with straight corners like we have right here with this image. So you can explore some positioning, for example, we have the space right here between the image and the left edge of our screen, but perhaps you want to extend that image all the way to the edge of the screen. So it's really all up to you and how you want to uh, explore these wireframes on paper when you bring them inside of Adobe XD. So as I said, in this video, we are going to get started with it. And the first thing I'm actually going to do is move this wireframe right here to this side because it's much easier for me than to extend this all the way down so I can explore it just a little bit. The first thing I'm going to do is when you click on your uh, artboard name, you can click layout right here and let me hit control zero so I can snap uh, back into place. Click right here and we are going to play around with these columns just a little bit. First thing I'm going to do is click right here so that I can lower the opacity of these columns just so that you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Then I'm going to change this cutter width to 60, change the column width to 82, and this is going to stay at 138. So what we did right here, so we have columns, which are these blue bits. We have gutter width, which is the spacing between our columns, and column width is 82, which is basically the width of the column itself. What I done this is, let me quickly bring it back just a little bit so you can see it better. I always like to increase the spacing between of my columns just so that um, this gutter spacing uh, acts sort of like a white space or a negative space between our columns just so that elements can play out on the page a little bit better and we have a little bit more breathing room between our elements so everything looks much more coherent and uh, much more pleasing to the eye if you want to say it like that. 
Okay, so now let me bring it back. So I will type in seven, for example, for 7%, or I can simply lower it down like this, just so that you guys can see what I'm doing a little bit better. So what I did previously is click right here on the libraries. I imported some colors from the original project. I also imported some character styles from the original project, as well as some basic icons. Now you can see these flags right here, and I actually use the plugins to create these flags. You can click right here and the plugins uh, uh, plugin is called UI logos. So let me quickly show you. You can simply use a rectangle tool and you can create a rectangle. So let's use 92 by 60 or whatever. You can remove the border, use the repeat grid and you can do however or many of these you want. They recommend 194. So let's see 2, 4, 6, 8, 9 and then 10. Now let's go down 20. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 14. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Oops, something like that. You can ungroup the grid and then remove six of them. So two, four, six, or let's remove the four and see if that does the trick. Select them all, click on the UI logos, and then select country flags. And it will tell you 196, please select up to 194. So I will have to remove these two, then select all country flags click once again and it's going to generate 194 country flags now i'm doing this because we are going to have the top navigation right here at the top right and that is going to um, show us the languages that the user can select in order to browse this website so in our case we have the serbian and we have united uh, kingdom english so that's how i generated these two flags so let me go ahead and remove all of these obviously you can go ahead and delete any one of these and if i take you to the layers panel you can see that all of them are named correctly uh, for uh, each country. So if I click right here, you can see it's Netherlands, for example, this one is Spain and so on and so forth. So let me go ahead and remove all of them and let us get started. So first thing I'm going to do is actually create our top nav and let me start with my rectangle because you can see right here that we have our top nav. We are going to have the location and location right here for business, mobile phone and these two flags. Obviously, as I said in the previous video, this flag, which is selected in this case, English language is going to be at 100% opacity. And this, because it's Serbian language is going to be at lower opacity. Let's go ahead and create this. And right here, you can see the benefit of having the wireframe inside of Adobe XD, because if you have it right by your side, only you can see it. But if you have it like here in your computer, you can simply export this image back, or you can take it from your computer and send it via email. You can also drag and uh, drop it inside of your artboard like this. And then you can present this artboard to your client or teammate or whoever, and they can see it and see um, the changes that perhaps they want to include inside of this wireframe. So finally, let's get started. And actually the first thing I'm going to do is actually extend this all the way down so that we have a little bit more space. And this line that you see right here is basically the fold line. That's why it's called. And this part is what users are going to uh, see when they land onto this page. And for this part below, they have to scroll down. So let's start with the top nav and let me use my rectangle like that. I'm going to position it right there 1920 is going to be the width i'm going to remove the border now let's see for the color itself let me use this color so four six four six four six so nice gray color and let's see let's bring it back to here simply click right here and it's going to add this color to the color swatches i'm going to rename it to top nav bg like this and obviously for all of these if you want to get them enroll in the course and you're going to be able to get all of these icons, which I'm going to show you in this and in future videos. So top now BG. Now let's lower the height and the height is going to be 70 because we don't need it to be that tall. Now let me go ahead and import some of these. So I'm going to drag and drop the Serbian flag in. I'm going to position it to the center like this and align it to here. 
Next, what I'm actually going to do is position the UK flag like this, make sure it's in the center and make sure it's 40, for example, from this Serbian flag. So like this. Now that that's completed, what I can do is simply start by uh, importing this and drag and drop it inside like so. Or you can also select these two and click right here to make sure that this is in the center, position it like this. And finally, let's now use our location and let me quickly click on the text tool, click right here, type in our locations. Like that. I'm going to use poppins and let's see 18 like that. Make sure it's left aligned. It is make sure it's centered. And finally, make sure it's 20 from this icon. Next, I'm going to duplicate that. Type in for business. Like that. And let's see, perhaps I can put it somewhere, for example, 120 or something like that. Okay, now that's completed. I can make another copy of it and type in, for example, plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, just to indicate a phone number like that. I'm going to make sure that this is no, actually, let's leave it there. That's fine. And let's position, for example, 80 from this. So like that. And finally, I'm going to bring in my mobile phone icon inside like that. And let's see, I can position it to be 20 from here. So one, two, like this. Make sure that these two are in the center. And there we have it. Now, what I will uh, do is actually go ahead and organize all of these. So I'm going to position a location icon right here. Our locations, I'm going to group them, control G, type in locations. Next for business, I'm going to group the phone. So phone like that, England and Serbia, you can group them and call them flags. And the reason I'm grouping them is it's much easier than if you want to do a responsive resize later, which we are doing in the course. So once again, if you want to learn how to create responsive uh, design from all of these website pages, then I really urge you to jump inside and see uh, how we are doing that. So now we can go ahead and group all of these and call it top nav. like that. And what I'm going to do next is create uh, our hero section. So for our hero section, I'm going to create a hero BG and let's create another rectangle like this, make sure it's 1920. And there we have it. So for it, I'm going to use a nice gray color. So let's see, I can create something like this. There we have it, add it to my swatches. So it's this one. And the color is F2, F4, F6. So nice, uh, subtle gray color. So 1920 and the height is going to be 900. I'm going to position it right here and I'm going to exclude the border like that. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is actually create my navigation. So let's start with that. I'm going to draw another rectangle like this, like so. And for it, let's see for the height, we can use 120 like that. We can use some corner radius of 10, for example, we can remove the border. Let's have it be white like that. Let's use the background shadow of 10, 20, and then 20 once again. Let's see, I can even include the background blur. And for it, we're going to use settings of 20, 15, and then 50 like that. And let's see for the shadow, for example, we can lower down the opacity to 10. Now what this is going to do is actually, uh, when you start scrolling this page down, this is going to follow on scroll. So that's why we include it there. Let me quickly position it to be 50 right there. I'm going to drag and drop my logo inside. I'm going to, let's see, position it 40, for example. So one, two, three, four, like that. That's fine. So we are 26 roughly top and bottom. I like how that looks like. And let's now move ahead and create our navigation items. So let's see, uh, I'm going to use basically the same text, but let's type it in. I'm going to type in accounts. 
which is actually going to be this page where we are located. I'm going to use this color and let's see Poppins regular 24. I think that will work just nicely. So I'm going to select these two, make sure this is in the center, logo in this, that's fine. And let's see accounts, this can be left aligned, which it is 24, that's fine. Now let's duplicate this one, control D and let's type in loans. Let's move on and type in cards. Next one is going to be invest. And finally, the last one is going to be digital. I'm going to make another copy and type in login, for example, because I know I want to use a login button right here. And for the login button itself, let's see, we can use another rectangle like this. And for the dimensions, let's use 224 with 60, for example, in this case. I like how that looks like. Position it to the center and let's see, we can position it to be 40 as well. So we have a logo of 40 from the left edge and button uh, 40 from the right edge. Let's go back to our layers panel and I'm going to move this down right there. Let's see, we can call this uh, nav BG like this. This is going to be our hero BG. And let's see, this is going to be our button BG, so BTN BG, like that. And let's see for our button, let's use this color, for example. Okay, let's move login inside, make sure it's in the center, like so. Now for the login itself, I'm going to use a white color, like that. For the button, let's see 10 for the corner radius. That's going to work just fine. Remove the border, go back to the list panel and let's see, select these two, hit control G. Let's call it a login BTN. And let's move logo all the way right here. And now that we have something which resembles a navigation, you can see what we've done right here. So the only thing we have uh, missing is this selector. So let's quickly go ahead and create our selector. So let's see how we are going to do that. So let's see for the selector, we can use this rounded rectangle tool. So like this, and let's see height of five, for example, position it down like that, because this is selected. We can select this color, for example, because that's going to be our main color. I'm going to remove the border and let's see, maybe we can round up the edges to 10 or 50. Let's see how that looks like. That looks fine. Extend it. I like that. And that's basically it. We have created our navigation. Now let's quickly organize these and let's reorganize them right here. So this is going to be at 80, for example, like that. And let's see, I don't like how they look like they look a bit too big. So perhaps I can select all of them like that and use 18 and then use this color. Yeah, I like how that looks like much better because it gives us a bit more space than before. So this is going to be at 80. I'm going to make sure this is at 80 as well. This is at 80 and I'm using uh, simply shift and left click on my mouse and move them around and you can see that they are all selecting nicely and positioning into space like they should. So let's see, I'm going to extend this to here, to the left edge, extend this to right edge, make sure this is selected like that and there we have it. Now all I have to do is simply organize them a little bit better. This is going to be our selector like that. I'm going to position that just below our accounts, which is going to go right here. Next up is loans, next up cards, invest, and we're lacking digital, here it is. There we have it. So now BG, I'm going to select all of them, hit control G. This is going to be our main nav, so main navigation. Top nav is going to go to the top and there we have it we have concluded and created this section. Now we can move on and explore our hero section a little bit better. So I'm going to include a text and for example, let's include a text. So title, go 
goes here, for example. And I'm going to use, let's see, I don't know. Let's use this color for everything and then we're going to change it later. So we are Poppins 90 and Poppins is obviously free Google font and you can find it uh, on the link below uh, in the description of this video. So let's see, we have six columns, for example. So two, four, six. I'm going to line it up like so, like that. Control D to duplicate this. And let's see, maybe we can give this to be, I don't know, 24. That works fine. But let's just use the regular. I think they collide a bit too much here. And let's see, I can maybe put it to be 50 like that. And let's see this is a one line subtitle like that and let's see i can create a button here i don't like this uh 24 so let's use 18 and white make sure it's center aligned this time and simply organize it a bit better inside of your button like that and what we can also do is because we named it login button you can hit Control k to create a component and you can see it right here inside of your components now let's move on and i'm going to move these two down position title up on top and i can simply use this button hit ctrl d position it outside so i don't have to recreate it all of the time and let's see perhaps we can position it to be at 50 like that and instead of two columns wide i can make it three columns wide like that. Position it below. I'm going to right click, ungroup component, hit control G one more time. And I'm going to call it, for example, I don't know, learn more BTN. So let's change the text inside, learn more. And whatever text is located inside of our hero section here, it's going to say learn more here as well. So there we have it. We have completed our hero section. Let's now organize them just a little bit. I'm going to name this text. I'm going to use a, a rectangle like this. Select it and the text. Click right here to make sure the text is in the center between bottom of our main nav and the bottom of our hero image. Let's go ahead and group these two. Call it hero like that. And there we have it. Uh, in the next video, we're actually going to include all of those elements, which I showed you previously. So image of the people, circle, these background shapes, perhaps some uh, even some other shapes right here. So we're going to see what we are going to do with it. So right now we have accounts and let's do that. So I'm going to type in accounts right here. And I'm going to use in this color and let's see 48 make sure it's in the center and let's see we can for example position it at 100 from here so like this and below you can see that we have four of these different icons and we are going to uh, create them now so the first thing i'm going to do is you can see right here that we have these boxes and as you can see we have selected this box accidentally move this so this box is going to be selected so we have start account foreign account millennial account and premium accounts so let's now start and create this box with an icon inside so once again we have 100 right here at the top and that's our spacing so let's now move on and create these boxes so to create a box i'm going to use a rectangle tool once again and let's see i can have it be three columns wide for example so 366 with for example 312 let's say like that i'm going to give it this color and let's see perhaps i can give it 20 for the corner radius and I'm going to remove the border because we don't need it. I have this icon already prepared. I will drag and drop it into place, position it in the center, and that's going to act as our icon placeholder for later. Now what I'm going to do is actually type in start account. And let's see, I'm going to use this color, so same like we did before. And let's see for that text, perhaps we can use 24 bold. So let's see. 24 bold where it is here it is and you can jump inside and organize these so you can move them around i'm going to position this 
so 24 let's go light bold down 48 and 90 so once again 24 bold that's going to work just fine make sure it's in the center of these two and make sure these two are in the center like that now let's see maybe we can position this to be i don't know one two three four five six maybe so 60 down i think that's going to work just nicely and let's see perhaps we, we can position this to be 40 so one two three four like that and what i need right here is a little arrow so i'm going to use this polygon tool simply draw a nice little arrow and you can rotate it however you want i can position it in the center like this make sure it's in the center and i can simply skew this down a little bit like so because i don't want it to be that big i'm going to remove the border and I'm going to use the same color for the fill color, so this same color. And then I'm going to select these two and make sure to put them in a union. Click Add, like that. And I'm going to go right here and call it Selector, like that. Because that's going to be where users are going to click to select any of these items. So once again, you have your polygon and you have your rectangle inside and you can independently edit any of them if you want to. So let's see, we have selector. I'm going to position it all the way down. We have start account. We have star icon. And let's see, I can group all of these. Hit control G, call them start account. And then what I'm going to do, you can use a repeat grid, but I'm just going to simply use copy and paste. And let's see, I can position it to be 100 from here as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, while using shift and your bottom arrow. Control D to duplicate it, position it here, control D, and finally control D right here. I'm going to move this down. This is going to be premium. This one is start account. This one is going to be foreign. And finally, this is going to be millennial. Like that. Now jump inside all of them and change them here as well. that and finally this is going to be premium now that that's completed everything is as it should be accounts is at the top like so what I'm going to do is create this image that you see right here so let's go ahead and do that so I'm going to use a rectangle tool once again position it somewhere around here and let's see perhaps we can use six so it can be six columns wide like that and while we're at six, perhaps we can let's delete this real quick. I can call it image, so IMG. And let's see, perhaps I can position it to be 60 from here, like this. And let's see, we can edit our image to um, make it just a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to put this down. And let's see, corner radius. Let's use different corner radiuses, actually. So let's use 20. 0, 20, and 0. So what I did right here, if I jump inside, use this color, for example, for our image, remove the border, click outside, you can see that we have a rounded bottom right edge and top left edge, just to give it a little bit more spice, and that's what these are. If you hover, you can see top left corner radius is 20, top right is 0, bottom right is 20, and bottom left is 0. We're not going to use any border, shadow, background blur, anything. We're just going to leave it at that. We are at 60 here, which is fine. And because if I take you back, you can see that we have a button right here. I'm going to use this same button, but first of all, I have to create it as a component. So instead of learn more, let's simply call it main BTN because it's going to repeat throughout our design. Hit control K and that's our main component. And later on we can create different child components from it simply drag and drop it into play and let's see instead of having it right here i'm going to have it right here so our text and the title are going to be five columns wide and we're going to have this one column 
spacing between these two. So let's see what we can do right here. Let's use our type tool. Click right here. Type in service name here. I'm going to use, let's see, in this color, 48, like that. Make sure it's left aligned like that. That's going to be our title. Position it right there nicely. Control D to duplicate it. And let's see, for this one, I can use 24 and regular, for example, like that. And let's see, for, for example, we can be 40. I think that's going to be enough between these two. Yep. And then I'm going to use, let's see, fixed size, extend it, extend this all the way down. And let's see, hmm, perhaps I can have five lines of text. So let's see, control C, like that, three, four, and five. And why I did this is you can simply click right here to cut to the height of your box. Why I did this is because I'm going to simply use another plugin, which is called Lorem Ipsum. Click on it, fill with placeholder text, and I'm going to use this, which is just a basic one. I don't know why it keeps doing this. So let me go ahead and copy and paste my original text like that, cut it to height. So one, two, three, four, five, like that. But you should be able to fill it in with placeholder text. Perhaps, um, yeah, I think this is the issue right here. So if I go with fixed size, fill with placeholder text, insert text. Let's try it one more time. Yeah, so that was the issue all along. So let's see, four, five, perhaps we can leave it here. Fill with placeholder text, insert. I don't know why it keeps doing that. So let me select one more line, paste it down. If you're using this function for auto height, which is basically a really new function to Adobe XD, some of these plugins like Lorem Ipsum haven't been updated to follow along with all of these new features of Adobe XD. So sometimes you're going to get all of these bugs. Auto height cuts text to height, wherever you want to uh, cut it. So that's why I like using it. And I think it's really uh, nice to have it. So I'm going to cut right here and remove this word no. So one, two, three, four, five, we are 40. And I'm che uh, checking my spacing by using Alt key and simply hovering on whatever effect or spacing I want to uh, show it basically. So I'm going to position this to be 40 as well like this. Select all three, make sure they are in the center, hit Control and G, go back to the layers panel and call this text. I'm going to move it all the way down organize them just a little bit like so. And basically for each of these later on, we are going to create this separate line of text and separate image. So I'm going to group them and call them info. And basically at the end, we should have four of these info sections and four of these images, four of these texts for each of these four services. It's going to be much clearer when we finish this design. Let's go ahead and group all of these. So I'm going to call them accounts like that. And what we are going to do next is you can see we have common questions below. So I'm just going to jump inside my accounts, hit control D, remove this outside of the folder, position it down. And let's see, we can be 100. So like this. There we have it. And here we're going to write in common questions like that. Make sure that is in the center as well. What I'm going to do next is drag my icon right here really quick. And let's see, I can position it to be 150, for example, from my text. So let's see. like so. So we are 150 down. And let's see now I can type in some text below. So let's use 24 bold. Let's actually start typing like this. So let's see common account questions. 24 bold left aligned like that. And let's position it to be, for example, left and 40. like so. Below that, let's see, maybe we can go with, I don't know, 40. 
and a regular. And let's see, maybe we can use a box like that. Make sure it's 40. I'm going to extend it like this, for example. We can go even more down and let's try one more time with lorem ipsum. You can see now it did fill, but let's cut one line of text like this. And let's see, I can do one more. So hit control D. I'm going to position it down 40, but I'm going to have a auto width like this. So I don't have a boxed text and I'm going to have just one line of text like this and perhaps call it, I don't know, benefits of opening an account with us like that 40 down one more time since we uh, start account and one more 40 down like that now I'm going to select these three and change their colors because those are going to be clickable links. So people will be actually able to click on them and go to separate pages, which are FAQ pages basically and read the explanations for all of these. So let's see common account. We have star icon right here. So common questions star like that. That's fine. And let's change these around like that. So this first one is going to be common account questions. Control D. Position this one here. This next one is going to be common banking questions. And simply change this. And we are obviously going to uh, include real information, real data later. But for now, for this wireframing section, we are just trying to move on as quickly as possible and simply uh, include as little information as possible for clients to understand us. Finally, this is going to be helpful tips like that. And let's rename it here as well. So basically what we've done right here is we explained to the client that these three are going to be different, but they're going to be um, of the same purpose, let's say. So all of them are going to uh, be there with just the most common questions that users will be asking. And basically these links will take them to the most common answers to those questions which they are asking. Now, finally, let's deal with that info strip at the bottom. So you can see we have a logo, we have a location icon, mobile phone icon and email icon right here with all of the information on the side. And after that, we are only left with the footer. So let's start with that. Let's use our rectangle. Let's draw a nice big rectangle like that. I'm going to use, let's see, this color. I think it works just fine. So let's see, 495463, that's fine. And let's see for it, let's call it info strip BG. Move it down. Next, I'm going to use my logo, drag and drop it inside, like so. And as you can see, I have two states. I have gray state and I have default state. But because these two colors work really nicely, what I can do is inside of my regular state, simply change this to white, for example, or to this color, whatever the branding is and whatever the branding allows us to do. So I'm going to leave it like that. I really like how that looks like. So what we need is the location icon. Here it is. We need a mobile phone icon and we need an email icon. Instead of typing everything, I'm simply going to copy this text from our top nav, go all the way to here, control V and position this right here, make sure it's in the center. And what you can do is basically make more copies 
because we are going to need three copies. All of them are left aligned like that. And let's see, now we can select all of these. So let's bring them down like so. And we can select all of these and our info strip PG. Click right here to make sure all of them are center aligned. And let's see, all of this can be 150 from this section. So as I said, our locations and we have our phone number and our email. So let's start by organizing all of these. So let's see, maybe I can select this one as well as our locations. And let's see, first of all, maybe we can position it to be 20 like it was at the top. So let's see like this. So one, two, and I can select these two, call them locations location because it's going to be just one location let's select these two it's going to be phone and this last one is going to be email like that make sure that this is 20 and make sure that this is 20 like that finally let's see for example hello at new bank dot com because that is our name on the logo you can see right there and then i can position this right here let's see no so email is going to be down all the way to the right like that and let's see for example i can position this to be 190 so our locations can be let's see So 190 from our logo like that and location is going to be let's see somewhere in Serbia because these clients are located in Serbia and phone is going to be the uh, same one so one two three four five six seven eight nine like that and then what I'm going to do basically is move this to around here select all three and simply click right here which is going to distribute evenly uh, our phone number between these two. So if I click right here, you can see we are 221 and we are right here 220. So that's the best it can do. So once again, we have logo, location, phone, email and InfoStrip PG. Let's group it. Let's call it InfoStrip like that. And finally, what we need is our footer. For the footer, I'm going to use a rectangle like that. I'm going to call it footer BG like that. I'm going to position it to align with this one. And let's see, we can use this dark gray, which is going to uh, correspond really well with this color without any border, obviously. So let's see where we are. And we didn't remove the border here. There we have it. Now it all looks much better like that. Now for the footer, if I take you back to our original sketch, you can see that we have the names right here at the top and then we have uh, different services that all of them provide below. So what I'm going to do is type in accounts. And let's see, I'm not going to use white, but this color. And let's see what we can do right there. Bold 24, but this color. And let's see, I can position it right here. And from the top, it can be 100, for example. So like that. Control D one more time, and I'm going to position it uh, two columns apart. This is going to be loans. So basically everything you see in our main nav, but a little bit more. Cards. This is going to be invest. digital and finally other links like that what i'm going to do next is hit ctrl d on this one and let's see for example i can call it account one or even better let's give it a name but before we do let's change this to 18 and white color like that and let's see where can we put it, for example, I don't know, 
maybe 40 down like so and you can obviously use the repeat grid because we have four you can create four of them like that you can see that the spacing is 20 but we are going to increase it to 40 in this case because we have the spacing of 40 everywhere you can ungroup the grid if you want to speed things up a little bit and then simply reorganize these just a little bit more like that and let's see first second third and fourth now what i'm going to do is basically type in the name of our accounts so start accounts this next one is going to be for an account this is going to be millennial And finally, this is going to be premium account. There we have it. Now, what I'm going to do next is basically duplicate this one, position it here. And I'm going to simply type in this. So new bank limited 2021. Make sure it's center aligned. And let's see, I can position it, for example, 80 from here. Like that. And let's see, we are 100 down. And because we are 80, maybe we can go 40 down. So one, two, three, four. And there we are going to actually end up our footer like that. And I can double click on my artboard to cut it. Simply bring it inside all the way to here. And if you want, you can zoom in all the way close just to be a little bit more precise. And what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to group these. So account, control G, call it accounts. And let's see, so we have accounts at the top, start foreign millennial and premium. What I'm going to do right now is pause the video and I'm basically going to duplicate this, uh, these down and paste them right here for each of these and fill them in just so I don't bother you uh, with this unnecessary information basically and I'm going to show you how all of them are going to look like once they are finished. Okay so now that I've done that let's quickly go ahead and group everything. So we have footer BG at the bottom and let's see we're going to position this all the way down. I'm going to select all of these position them right here just so that we can close this for a second. There we have it. Footer BG at the bottom. I'm going to select all of it, hit Control G, call it footer. And I'm also hitting Control K, just so that I can create a component. And if I at any point want to change any of these, for example, in a selected state or whatever else, then I can change it in that particular state or go back to this original state change it there and it will apply throughout my design and change up everywhere. Final thing we need to do is basically move this to this section. So let's see common questions. Like this accounts, hero, main nav and top nav. There we have it. We have completed our wireframe. Video was a little bit longer than usual, but I really wanted you to understand how crucial this part of the process is because although we have created uh, a really, really similar design to this original one, we went ahead and changed, for example, corner radius on this image. We included some different copy already. We included some different colors than uh, original and so on and so forth. So what we're going to do in next video is let me hit control D right here. We're going to call this account page, but instead of wireframe, we're going to call it design. So I'll see you next week in the next video where we are going to import images here. We are going to change colors. We are going to import some different icons, position them instead of these posing fake icons. And we're going to include some real copy across all of our design to make it look a lot different than it is now and to make it look a lot more real and a lot more believable. So I'll see you there. 
Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you found some value in it. If you did, make sure to press that like button. I upload new videos every single week on design, passive income techniques, motivation and more. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.